Welcome to another episode of The Vegan Pulse. I am your host, Nancy Arenas, with another segment of Making Sense with Gabriel. Stick around. We'll be right back. Here we go. Hi, Gabriel. How are you? I'm doing great. How about you, Nancy? I'm ready to learn and hear what you have to say. Awesome. <laughs> Here we are with another segment of Making Sense with Gabriel. And the question for you today from one of our viewers is this. How important is fiber in our diet and where do we get some? Can you tell us also the difference between soluble and insoluble fiber? Awesome. So yeah, the importance of fiber. Uh, fiber is one of the most important things, um, you know, that we can get more of in our diets because, and, and because what comes with fiber are all these other beneficial nutrients for our health, these phytonutrients. Phyto is the scientific word for plant. And so it's the nutrients that come from plants. And these phytonutrients, there's thousands of them, who knows how many, many of them we don't even know or haven't even identified yet. But we know that they're so important for helping to improve our health. And so the and then, of course, the vitamins and the minerals, the other things people know that are essential to our health, we get a ton of vitamins and minerals from foods that also have lots of fiber. And those are our whole plant foods. So think fruits, vegetables, beans, or what, what we would call legumes, which are beans, split peas, chickpeas, and lentils, any kind of whole grain. And whole grains are always going to be healthiest and they're going to give us the most fiber when they're eaten in their whole intact form, as opposed to ground up into flowers and things like that. And then in addition to fruits, vegetables, legumes, whole grains, we have mushrooms, which are, of course, a fungus. They're a separate category, but we often lump them into uh, vegetables, which is fine. Mushrooms, nuts, seeds, herbs and spices. And you're going to get fiber from all those foods because all those foods either are whole plants or come from whole plants. Uh, in the case of spices, they're still whole plants. We just grind them up before we use them as spices usually, but you can use the whole seeds too. But you're going to get fiber from all those foods. And the important thing is when it comes to fiber is not only is it great to eat fiber and eat more of it, but diversity is king or queen in any situation. And so we get different kinds of fibers from all the different kinds of plants we eat. And so the more the merrier and the more diversity the merrier because those different kinds of fibers each plant has fibers that are unique. And so anytime we consume a different plant, a different kind of bean, vegetable, fruit, nut, seed, a whole grain, whatever it might be, the bacteria in our large intestine are going to feed on those fibers. And they end up in turn, after they eat and digest those fibers, they uh, basically through that digestive process are going to produce byproducts. And a lot of those byproducts of that, di uh, that bi bacterial digestion of the fiber we eat is super healthy for us. One of the key things that it gives us are these things called short chain fatty acids. And the bacteria in our gut are what produce those short chain fatty acids. And those short chain fatty acids are incredibly important for a healthy body. And so, yes, eating more fiber is better. And of course, the average American consumption of fiber is only 15 grams per day, which is abysmal. It's much lower than it should be. Uh, the average minimum requirement should get up to at least around 31 grams per day. And so we're not even hitting half of the average minimum requirement for what men and women should be getting. Women need a little bit less than men because their nutrient needs are a little bit lower because women tend to be smaller than men. But if you average men and women in different sizes and different ages, we need at least 31 grams. Ideally, we should be getting a lot more than that because that's a minimum requirement. But again, we're not even getting half of our minimum requirement in the United States. And that's why we see such incredible digestive issues, right? Whether it's all the way at the top with gastroesophageal reflux disease, what we also call heartburn. Uh, and then if you track all the way down through the digestive tract down to the bottom, when we think about conditions like ulcerative colitis and irritable bowel syndrome and diarrhea and constipation, and it's literally a multi-billion dollar industry 
here in the United States, people spending endless amounts of money on all the medications and all the -the over-the-counter remedies to try to deal with all the digestive issues and problems that we have. And it could all, or, or, or virtually all, most of it could be completely avoided or eliminated if we just ate more whole plant foods, we ate more fiber. Fiber is key to digestive health. And so, yes, that's why it's important. Without lots of fiber, we can't have a healthy digestive tract. And specifically, we can't have a healthy microbiome, which are all those bacteria that I mentioned that are living in our large intestine or our colon, which is at the bottom of the digestive tract after the esophag- the mouth, esophagus, stomach, small intestine, and then we get down to the large intestine. That's where all of our gut bugs live. And to keep those gut bugs happy, to keep those gut bugs healthy, and to keep those gut bugs diverse, just like I mentioned, we want diverse fiber coming in from lots of different kinds of plant foods. And to keep a diverse microbiome, because we want lots of different kinds of bugs or bacteria living in our gut to have a healthy gut. And in order to have a diverse microbiome, we got to feed them a lot of different fiber, a lot of different kinds of foods. And that comes from whole plant foods. And no, for the people that might be thinking, well, can I just take my Metamucil, you know, mix it up in my drink? Or can I just take my fiber pills, you know, that I buy over the counter wherever I get them? Yes, those things can help get, help improve at least giving us more regular bowel movements. And that's a good thing. So fiber pills can be used for that or fiber drinks, you know, like Metamucil. The problem is, is those fiber supplements do nothing to improve the long-term health of our gut, the long-term health of our large intestine where our gut bugs live. And so, you know, that fiber simply comes in and it comes right out. And yes, it's going to help improve our bowel movements, which is one thing, but to improve the long-term health of our gut, we need to eat fiber in its natural form in the form of whole plant foods as much as possible. Now, I can't remember, what was the last part of that question, Nancy? So uh, the difference between soluble and insoluble fiber. Okay, perfect. Yes. So soluble versus insoluble. Um, Soluble fiber is the fiber that we find predominantly in something like oatmeal. And that's what gives oatmeal that uh, soluble fibers basically absorb water, you know, when they're put in, uh, when, when they're, when water's added to them. And so they be, they form like a gel. And that's why oatmeal has these wonderful properties of being able to lower or has been associated with helping to lower our cholesterol, something that's also very important because it has that gelling capacity. You know, you add water to it and it basically creates a gel. You can also think of something like chia seeds, how you can make chia pudding. It forms a gel right in water. And so that's what you find with soluble fibers. Insoluble fibers are the opposite. So when, when you add water to a solution, insoluble fibers do not absorb water. Um, but they both help basically to, you know, either way, they're going to help improve our digestion. Um, and they're going to help to improve the speed at which I think soluble fiber, because it absorbs water, will slow things down in the gut a little bit. But again, still very important. Insoluble fiber will help to speed things up. Uh, but either way, we need a lot of both kinds of fiber to have a healthy gut, to have a healthy digestive process, to have a regular digestion in terms of things moving through our gut more quickly so that we prevent things like constipation, again, which is a huge problem in the United States. So many people are are constipated and there's no reason for it because if we ate enough fiber, we would have nothing to worry about. We'd be taking regular bowel movements. And that's also very important because there's a number of things that happen in our gut when we hold on to our waist too long, right? It allows all these different things to happen um, to the point where things can actually start to putrefy in our large intestine. Putrefaction is a really bad thing. We can prevent all that from happening if we have regular, consistent, and a good movement of the things through our gut. And the only way to do that uh, in a healthy way, you can of course take a laxative to move things through, but that's unhealthy because we're eliminating good gut bugs through that uh, when we do that. The only way to healthy long-term maintain a good digestion and a good microbiome is to eat more fiber. And you do that through whole plant foods. So I hope that gives people some great tips. That is awesome. So what you're saying, what I'm hearing is uh, Metamucil and those other um, supplements, it's more like a Band-Aid, but 
whole plant-based food is the actual medicine that prevents the disease. Or exactly. The, awesome. Yeah, we can't just be putting band-aids on things. We got to get to the root cause and we got to treat it right. And to treat it right, we got to do it with plants, whole plant foods. Awesome. Well, Gabriel, once again, thank you so much for sharing your knowledge with us. And until our next Making Sense with Gabriel, see ya. Can't wait. Thank you for joining us on another episode of The Vegan Pulse. I am your host, Nancy Arenas. Like us on Facebook, check out our website, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you have a pulse, you have a purpose. Live vegan. <laughs>